Okay, so um, part two, if you like. Uh, surprising how well kind of the introduction part one went, and uh, really pleased with the the messages and the feedback that I've that I've got, and this is one of the reasons why I'm trying to do these types of things within the current situation. So um, really appreciate all of the people that have got in touch with me just giving me the feedback uh, that they've watched it and, and surprisingly it was all right. So I'll, I'll carry on. Um, and what I'm going to try to do is try to go no, no longer than 20 minutes. So um, hopefully I don't bore people to death. But I'm going to look at today now uh, planning of a session and session structures and, and like I've said all along, it's it's my experiences, and hopefully my experiences I can transfer onto onto other people for them to agree, disagree, apply or not apply. That's that's obviously down to you. So again, I'll I'll try and uh, share some experiences of mine who I've worked with and and how it sort of worked within a, a team environment um, and specifically within within my professional environment at Charlton um, when working with the with the 15s, 16s and, and all of my experiences really that I'll share predominantly are through youth development uh, and, and kind of that's where I see myself as regards to a youth development coach. So I suppose a special mention really to, to, to three people that I've kind of um, worked with uh, on a session planning perspective and obviously delivering sessions with them, um, for them, supporting them, leading for them to observe and, and stuff like that. So uh, uh, a gentleman that I've already mentioned before, uh, someone called Adam Lawrence, um, head of coaching at Charlton, he would be someone that I would perceive as an expert planner um, someone who's very, very methodical in how he plans, how many players he plans for and, and their specific requirements and numbers available, so to speak. Um, someone else that I'd like to give a special mention to is, is Anthony Hayes, who I was very fortunate enough to work very closely with um, at Cholton with, with the under-16s and, and Hazy came in from Brentford. Um, very extremely methodical with his planning, plans to great detail as regards to who's going to be attending the session, uh, what position they obviously are and what's their preferred position, um, what facilities are available, so what pitch we're going to be working on. Um, He'd go through sections of the session, which I'll come on to a little bit later, but he'll come on to sections of the session um, and, and chunk it and piece it together um, and was very, very methodical with the framing of the session as regards to the organisation and the planning of the session um, and then share that with me and, and obviously come up with um, joint responsibilities regarding this is what he's going to focus on and this is what he would like me to focus on, which would never kind of conflict. Um, so they'd kind of look like he'd look at the attacking side of the game and he would focus on some key attacking elements and he would take a group of players to, to work with, so the midfielders and the attackers, so to speak. And then I would um, take the defenders and the goalkeeper um, and, and look at, working on defending elements and we'd work collaboratively with players who play in their preferred positions but then against each other and again I'll, I'll, I'll expand upon that as regards to the session structure um, later on um, and then someone like uh, Taff Williams who, who, who I've worked with um, at UK Football Trials and he's got bundles of experience he's a former Berry goalkeeping coach, uh, a former assistant manager at Crawley and at Portsmouth. And he was very, very big on, on uh, obsessively planning, which we, we uh, 
constantly uh, have a laugh about because he was extremely well thought regarding specific numbers, specific abilities, specific age groups and, and who do what at a specific time. But the biggest thing that I learned from, from TAF and will continue to learn from TAF is always working backwards from the game. So game day being being a Saturday, what does what does training look like on, on, on the Monday and who's doing what, how many players, what areas and, and stuff like that. So um, they're kind of my, my brief experiences really with, with those um, coaches that I've been fortunate enough to work with and, and continue to work to work with uh, and, and some kind of ideas. The things that I will always ask myself when, when planning a session is some of the things that I've already touched upon. So some questions that I'll always ask myself whilst sitting down and writing out a session plan, which is something that I've, I would strongly encourage every coach to do and, and therefore transfer and take the session plan onto the pitch, um, whether that be on an iPad or, or, or written out. And I'll always ask these types of questions, really, which I'll, I'd like you to consider. But who, who, who's training? So, how many players have you got? Are the goalkeepers integrated within your session? What time do they come in and integrate with the outfield players? Um, are any of the players that you're working with, do they have any, any current injuries? Are they returning from injury? Do I need to speak with the medical department regarding um, those players that might be on my radar of? He's picked up a knock or he's returning from injury. Are they doing a full session, half session, no contact? Um, do we have any players training up? So are any of the younger players coming into the session this evening? Um, are, are any trialists due in? Uh, do we have any, any coaches that are observing the session? Are members of the FA coming in to observe me doing the session or the coaches that I'm working with, um, linking with support staff. So are any coaches um, that I'm working with coming in and what parts or what elements of the session are they, are they, are they leading on? So sports science is an example. Um, what, what, the obvious ones, what kit and equipment would I require? What space is available to me? What use of the facility? So is it grass? Is it, Synthetic turf, is it indoor, is it outdoor, and obviously the weather conditions and stuff like that. Um, how long is the session? So predominantly my sessions uh, are either 90 minutes or 120 minutes. Um, what's, you know, the most important thing really is what is the focus of, of, of the sessions? What these perceived outcomes uh, from the session but also how are you going to frame that session to try and encourage every player to have a positive outcome of your session and I'll come back to that it's a really important thing that I would always consider strongly um, does the session link to your previous session does it link to a session over the next kind of block of week, two weeks, four weeks? Does the session link predominantly to um, the game that is, is, is up and coming? Does it link to the perceived syllabus at a club? Um, and with that syllabus, the, the, the scheme of work? Um, and most importantly, how does it link to the game itself. So within the example that I said, working with um, under 15s, under 16s, and then um, uh, under 19 or, or, or youth team players, how does it link to the 11 v 11 game? So there are things that I would always consider and ask myself when planning a session, like I said, with, with, with my team. Now I know that there's other environments that coaches will, will, will obviously work uh, work in and, and trying to gather as much 
intelligence and information as, as possible is really important. So WhatsApp groups, uh, emails, trying to continue to manage players to let you know whether they're injury, whether they're returning from injury, whether they're currently injured, whether they've picked up knocks, whether they're playing for for school, for district, etc., etc., etc. So trying to to continue that um, means of communication just for you to plan as much as you possibly can. And like anything, you can plan as much as you can, but obviously dealing with young players and dealing with other humans mean that there's a, there's obviously other things that 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 may happen um, within your session. So. Yes, have a have a plan and have a structure is, is absolutely vital and really important. But obviously, the most important thing with all of this is, is to develop young players. So if you do have to veer off the plan or work organically based on meeting the needs of the players during that session, that's something that I've been really looking at uh, in the last kind of six to, 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 to nine months is, yes, have a plan, but also... If the plan isn't meeting the needs of the players, then adapt and adapt to meet the needs of the players and adapt to um, to what, what's unfolding, whether at the beginning of the session with you're playing for 20 players but only 15 turn up, you're playing for having a goalkeeper but a goalkeeper doesn't turn up. Um, you have to have this element of adapting yourself and the session based on the circumstances that unfold either before the session and during the session. So they're kind of things um, that, that I would always look at. And I, I try and put myself, and this is a really important point, that I will always put very high up on, on, on when I plan a session. But I'd look at, um, when I plan a session, I, I, I'll always look at it from a player's perspective. And I'll always look at what does the player get from this session. And I'll try and put myself into their position and run through the session in my mind and run through it on a, on a tactics board or run through it um, pen and paper and, and kind of, well, this is my session. This is what I'm planning for. But what does he get out of it when playing as a defender? What does he get out of it when playing as a midfield player? What does he get out of it playing as an, a, a, as an attacker? And what does the goalkeeper get out of it as well? Because it, it's it's a coach's responsibility to benefit and develop the player. And and if you're planning a session that doesn't develop the player, then I think you need to review your plan. Um, so I'd always try and put myself in a perspective of what, what what are the outcome of the player, what does the player get from, from, from this this session. And then moving on to kind of session structures, traditional session structure that I would not always work to, but um, something that I would probably do more more so than than others and this type of, 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 of structure based on a 120-minute um, session, so a two-hour session, um, is, is I would always look at that 120 minutes. I'd always look at chunking it into either eight 15-minute blocks or four 30-minute blocks. Um, and why I do that is, is some of my sessions are 90 minutes, so I can look at it. Um, both 15 and 30 minutes and also I'll, I'll look at structuring the session and we'll always work back from uh, the sessions that I deliver we have a mandatory 30 minute game at, at the end of the session um, so I, I'd always work on the on the basis of that cannot be moved that's always in place 30 minutes of football non-intervention from the coach, allow players the freedom and, and, and the time to express what they've learnt throughout the session to come out, hopefully within that situation of the final part of the session. So the session would normally, again, a traditional session of mine, will the players start to arrive. So everything would be laid out, best case scenario. So I'll get to the session um, 
an hour or, or an hour and a half ideally before the session begins and I'll be up on the turf normally the the, the 3G Astro I'll, I'll normally be on there 45 minutes before the session begins setting up so depending on the space available I'll, I'll, I'll structure my sessions I'll normally have half a pitch uh, if I'm fortunate I'll have three quarters of a pitch so I'll set up parts of the session within that area to, to cut down on the, on the transfer time of going from part first part to second part to third part to fourth part as an example so everything would be laid out and I'd normally encourage play, players to turn up early you know um, that's a wonderful thing to see and, and, and them taking that ownership of of turning up early so I'll have an arrival activity or, or an activity or a space or an area where players will come in and work individually or within their units where where if you've got players that really take responsibility for their development they'll turn up early and they'll do bits they'll work on their left foot ball striking they'll work on their heading they'll work on the key areas that we've discussed that they know they've got to work on as an individual or within, within small groups. So there'll always be a space or an area for players to, to arrive and, and, and have that time to, to develop themselves as individuals or within small working groups. And then the session begins really in, in, in the first kind of 30 minute block. We'll always start with, with a kind of a physical focus. Um, for want of a better term, if you know, an activation or, or, or a warm up, um, but the physical will always, always, always have some some sort of ball manipulation and, and, and some technical ball work from 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 the very beginning. A ball comes out within my sessions, um, and then I have I, I try and strike a balance of doing the fundamental football movements as regards to their physical outcomes, but with a ball. So ball manipulation, dribbling, passing. Um, unopposed possession stuff like that which obviously link to them getting maximum exposure benefiting their technique but also getting them physically um, activated and prepared so that the reduction of injury um, is, is focused on so that's kind of the first 30 minute block now sometimes I look at 15 minutes and then 15 minutes so it might be 15 minutes of, of physical 15 minutes of, of technical but everything over that period of 30 minutes involves uh, ball work so to speak and then I'll progress that into something perhaps opposed so it might be um, a technical practice which um, may have an un underload or an overload so I might look at framing the session um, in, in, into a possession based session uh, it might be a transfer type game where it's got a team in possession and a team out of possession the team in possession might have six players a team out of possession might have four players and then i'll be clever with who are those players uh, with the six who are in the overload situation and who are those players with the four so for want of a better term i'm, I'm starting to look at their tactical um, playing positions and, and, and looking at who needs to be on that team? Who needs to be on this team? And why? And how is that benefiting them? Um, and again, that might last kind of 30 minutes. Um, and then I'd expand on that. So the area may increase in size and it would become predominantly um, a, a a game situation or a game scenario, so so a tactical focus, so to speak, um, and it might link to a defence versus attack type practice uh, within two shapes that we that, that, that we play in. So the players are familiar. The players will get obviously selected to play in their preferred positions, and again, it might link to this is what I'd like to happen so a scenario or a situation um, which therefore may well link should do uh, which may well link to to the game ahead so to speak and then from that we would always finish with um, a 30 minute game 30 minute game will vary between 
a small sided game uh, in house within within our age groups. So it might be an eight v eight, seven v seven, nine v nine, ten v ten, um, and, and also something that um, I found a huge benefit to the players is, is finishing with an eleven v eleven with other age groups. So so playing the, the age group below or playing the age group above. Obviously, training uh, regimes may uh, may be important in organising that, but a thirty minute uh, 11 v 11 practice against you know the under 16s if you're working with the 15s as I do would be something that I I really like to see at the end of the session where the players will express themselves and the constant theme throughout the beginning of the session and the first chunk of the session must continue throughout the session and then therefore be applied within the game. I uh, vary my coaching position, so sometimes I get in amongst the game and I'll speak to players and I'll link back all of the messages that I've given the players throughout the session, which has a continued theme throughout. And I'll constantly um, remind the players, what about this, what about that, through questioning or or, or prompting in the game. Um, But then I also... We, we have um, a little bit of an area which is elevated where we can go up and, and, and have a look at the, the game um, from above, so to speak, so get that, that broader broader view. Um, and then we'd always have a half-time, have a half-time team talk, just pick up on bits and pieces that I've noticed that I can obviously um, give feedback back to the players and then the players' feedback to, to, to myself and then we play second half. So everything... Um, flows throughout the session from from the first minute or even before the first minute with the arrival activity right up to the game let's say finish within 11 v 11 there's a constant theme there's a constant progression of space so the spaces increase um, but the theme and the focus of the session remains the focus of the session we don't dart about and, and one minute we're talking about in possession, possession, and the next minute we're talking about out of possession pressing. There's a constant learning theme, uh, and we we stick to the objectives of the session. So that's kind of where I'm at, and and there's some specific examples on um, the planning of a session and the session structures. Obviously, there's there's my uh, three sessions which are on my YouTube channel. Which you'll 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 pick up a vibe, hopefully, <laughs> of of me doing those things, uh, stuff like an introduction uh, and, and stuff. Where during the session we'll try and use, um, you know, the the, the tactics balls as a visual aid. Um, I'll, I'll try and link, obviously, players from the professional game that the players that I'm coaching are familiar with, and, and, and kind of sow a seed as regards to transferring my vision. Um, in supporting their development. So, once again, really appreciate everyone that's that's uh, watching these these short videos and keep giving me that feedback. Uh, I, I do take the, the, the feedback on on board, and I'll try and continue to a, apply all of the comments that that you guys give me, and hopefully we can we can expand upon uh, these videos. So, the next one I'm aiming to do. Um, after this is kind of creating a, a positive and fun environment during a session and, and my little tips as to um, how I try and do that. Okay, stay safe in these interesting times uh, and see you for the next video. Thank you.